Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? How are you? I'm fine. How I are can. you? How are you? Doing good. I'm waking up. <laughs> yeah, it's early for you. Go ten o'clock, Mrs. Bursell. What's what's all that about? I got stuck. <laughs> How are you doing? Okay. Hmm. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me? Hmm. Mm. Oh, there you are. I lost you for a minute. Yeah. How, how are you doing then? All right? Yeah, everything's great. Yeah? Yeah, how about you? Not too bad, not too bad. It's 6 p.m. here, yeah. so it's, it's, it's been a long day. Um, so, no, nope, I'm still here. I've got my I've got my coffee, so all's good, you know. So, so um, thanks for fitting me in, because I know you're kind of... You? You can't, <laughs> that's too healthy for me. <laughs> Bacon sandwich for me in the morning, usually. <laughs> Um, oh wow! <laughs> you're so busy. I mean, you seem to be like the the busiest woman in show business or something. You know, t t what's your average week like at the moment? Then is is it just crazy here there filming or or what? What's going on at the moment? It's pretty crazy. I mean, we're we're shooting the time war. Yeah. And um, like this morning, my drop off for today is all of these pages, <laughs> and he says. So don't let it freak you out. This is what we're doing today. Okay. <laughs> you see, I just saw it. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I spot, oh, you, you probably know, I spoke to Neil last week. And, you know, it comes across as being a nice guy and passionate and about what he does. But, you know, he's, he's a real tyrant, isn't he? Real. That's that's a real, the real truth, isn't it? You can say it. I won't tell him, you know. <laughs> No, it was funny because I listened to your interview with Neil, yeah. and then I listened to your interview with William. All oh, right, okay. And it, it, kind of, it kind of made me laugh because Neil really is, um, you know, for a director, he he's a punisher. That's yeah. kind of my nickname for it. Yeah. But that said, people who love what they do love nothing more than a director who's really in their hands-on with a big vision. Yeah. You know, it just... <laughs> It can get pretty tiring physically and emotionally, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he would say it was, it was about the story they worked. I think you and William last week were the scene um, that just, I think he almost killed William, it sounds like, with the stress. And and he said that the, the whole thing was just, he said William was just stunning in, in this scene that you guys put together. But he said your reaction was just brilliant, you know, this kind of like, oh, my God, you know, what's going on? Um I, is it, is it you know you know what you know what happened with that yeah what happened with that is that w William was over here and we were having a meeting mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. he kind of wanted to go in some different directions with his character arcs and so he was talking to Neil about it I go well you can always have him treat you like he treats me I go because <laughs> me and he said, no no I want to do that I want to do that. So William, I mean, Neil's always directed William, but William um, kind of asked for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so Neil, <laughs> you know, he, and it's it's kind of what I go through every day yeah. when we're shooting. You know, it's, it's kind of fun to watch him do it to someone else. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I wish I'd have spoke to you before I spoke to William because then I would have passed on what you just said. Well, you asked for it, you know, basically. <laughs> <laughs> it serves you right. I've had to put up with it now. It's up to you. <laughs> How, I mean, how's it going with the? Go on, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say. Sometimes um, Neil. Yeah. <laughs> you go. Sometimes Neil say, "Well, I think we could do this at this particular point, and you know, but but hold, but you know, he kind of gives you like a grading scale. Like you're thinking, okay, all out is is 12 and he's thinking all out is eight, but you got to get to 12 before he can pull you back to eight. You know, yeah. so it's very precise too. Yeah. And it messes with your brain. Right. You know, your brain's kind of like, whoa, wait a minute. You know, but you just got to <laughs> go with it. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, obviously, you know, I've, first sort of kind of saw you in, in, on the big screen myself in, in, in Rogue Warrior. Um, before we just talk about that, I mean, obviously your career has been, you've done loads of stuff, soaps and model and all sorts. Um, how come sci-fi kind of? Because I know you are a geek. I know you. I know you are a bit of a nerd. But how come it took so? Long, how come it took so long to get into sci-fi? Did the choice? Did the 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 opportunity just not come along, or, or or what? What was the reason? You know, we all have our life paths, and my favorite genre is sci-fi. Yeah. And I've gone on a couple of sci-fi auditions growing up, but I never booked them. 
you know, so you kind of go, okay, well, I'm just going to study my craft. And when I look back on it now, I see that I always wanted to do sci-fi and I was hoping that I'd be in just the right place at just the right time. Mm. But I would never let myself realize that because I always look at what I do book and what I am working on. It's like a lot of drama, a lot of comedy. And then um, Neil and I sat down one day and he asked me to voice over voice over this one spaceship computer, you know, and it's like, well, of course I'm going to voice a spaceship <laughs> computer. I've never done voiceover before, but it's sci-fi. Yeah. So it kind of grew from there. I was getting a lot of awards from, from festivals and stuff for my performances. And he kind of got to know what kind of an actress I am. I'm that kind that like never stops that like, I'll work on something until it starts shooting. Yeah. And some actors will show, be like, oh, well, we, 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 we learned this last week. And so let me refresh myself. I'm like, you mean you didn't work on it from when you learned it to now? You know, because to me, I'm never done. Right. And so that's when he had me um, lead up his next, his next project. He's like, let's make something together. Let's put you at the top of it. And we both worked so hard yeah. on that film. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that comes across. I mean, Rogue Warrior. I, I mean, you've heard me say this a few times. I've said it to you, and I said it to Neil last week and William. Um, you know, it blew me away when I first saw it. Um, you know, for for a kind of relatively low budget feature, um, it looks fabulous. Um, you know, it's a great story, great characters. You know, you're very good. I know. You know, I've said that to your face, but you are. Uh, it's just a, a really. I mean, and obviously, it did really well in terms of you know the the festivals and the runs. You got a heap of awards as well, yeah. So yeah. you know, <laughs> was it what you thought it would be in terms of a sci-fi experience? You know, filming that, or was it you know just vastly different, or is it just like any other acting kind of job, really, when it boils down to it? You know, um, what was kind of cool with Rogue Warrior is there's this, you know, I get the script and we talked about it a lot, you know, and and there were these cool moments where I would kind of take it a lot further emotionally than necessarily called for the script. And then he'd kind of meld the character to, to, you know, so it was, it was like, I felt like I brought a lot of my experience to a sci-fi script, Yeah. you know, and I would, I would sit there and I would look for what she could be feeling and what she could, you know, I tried to breathe so much life and so many colors into her role and then the director loved it. So then we did that throughout the whole journey. Yeah. And so it was kind of a cool thing where, you know, I wear my emotions on tap, you know, so yeah. it was like I was able to really get into her. And since my acting method is more so I, I like to live it, I like to decide who they are, you know, know their lives and then just live them. And so when she's feeling things, I'm feeling all those things. Okay. And okay. so I'd never been that vulnerable in my life. I'd never been that strong in my life. So in some ways I learned from my character by allowing her to be that and not questioning her. And so it was kind of an evolution and a journey, yeah. just the filming in itself. Yeah. yeah. What was it like producing? Because you produced it as well, didn't you? So what 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 was that experience like as a, as a producer rather than the actress? Well, you know, I only help produce in pre and post. Okay. Because when I'm shooting, I can only focus on my character. <laughs> but what I really, really, really wanted to do was to cast the darn thing. (laughs) Because I've been on so many shoots, because Los Angeles is now a hub of actors that are trained to audition. Yeah, yeah. Which is a really bad thing. Mm. Because then they Mm. they get the part and they show up, but they don't necessarily have all the different colors that are necessary in order to live something. They don't have a method that they're based on, or they don't, you know, so I wanted to find people that were really brilliant actors that like to live their roles. And yeah. we used a lot of trick questions in casting. So I threw a wide net and then I narrowed it down and we got it down to the last few people and then Neil and I met with them. Yeah. So that was really, I would say, yeah. besides some location work, my primary interest was in making sure I got to work with really, really, really good actors. And you, you also know? got to film all over the place, didn't you? I mean, it was um, kind of multinational sort of, you know, in terms of filming tell me the thing about which made me laugh when i did the email interview before about missing out on coming to scotland that neil i think basically screwed you out of coming over here well tell tell us about about that the fact that you thought you were going to be filming over here well we we, you know we filmed close to there last time if you know you promised us a drink if we come out next time there's a drink (laughs) there's a drink waiting Um, i'm there you know yeah we were there for three weeks in england 
and he really wanted to go and keep going up to Scotland. I just had some time restraints because my mom, my mom's dealing with Alzheimer's right okay. now. So I try to not be too far away for too long, you okay. know, she's at the end stages. And, um, so he made, he made it up a little further than I did after <laughs> I left but, and got one of the castles on the beach yeah. and stuff like that. But that's, yeah. That's um, definitely um, on our on our bucket list of where we want to shoot next, well, for sure. It's so beautiful. Yeah, there. and like I said, there's a Guinness here waiting for you when you come over, you know, or a whiskey or whatever you want, you know. Maybe just one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how long... One! You... <laughs> All right, maybe two, okay. Um, I tried to tie him down last week about the time war in terms of filming. You didn't seem to know when it's gonna, how long it's going to be. I mean, how long do you know yourself? Because you seem to be doing, it seems to be doing a real Peter Jackson on you now, and just like extra scenes, extra scenes, reshoots, reshoots, you know. <laughs> I showed you what showed yeah, up today. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's it's really interesting, you know. Principal photography, what I would call principal photography, took about three weeks. Yeah. And we've shot eighty-five, ninety days since then. Okay. So. You know, and we've added cast members and everything's completely morphed. And because we really shot a film originally called At the Edge of Time. Yeah, yeah. And we shot that before <laughs> Rogue Warrior. And then Rogue Warrior got to be this behemoth. So it's like, okay, now we need to beef up At the Edge of Time because it has to be better. Every film has to be better than mm -hmm. the last. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we hired um, brilliant actors and people we worked with, some of them on Rogue Warrior, some of them we hadn't. And the scenes and every every shot was just so epic. And then he put it together and it made like this four hour feature <laughs> and it didn't work. The stuff we shot before didn't match yeah, with yeah. the serious stuff that we did now. So um, we're going to be releasing the other film as a prequel to The Time War okay. after The Time War comes out. Because The Time War is the one everybody wants. Yeah. You can't just dump a movie. You know, you've got to <laughs> finish it and get it out there. So we keep working on The Time War and, and the storyline has gotten woven into it. So in some ways, this great film that The Time War is going to be was birthed out of another project that he's been working on for 15 years that we shot three and a half, almost four years ago. Yeah. So it's really kind of a cool yeah a cool idea but it's really really cool i don't know what to compare it to it's like quentin tarantino's and and peter jackson took over sci-fi you know it's just it's out there it's twisted it's dark yeah and you, and you play is it hitler's daughter you play that's is that, i've got that right yeah well, that's a fun it's role <laughs> and she's time traveling she's also his nemesis so right. she's traveling through time and and mind you, there's a lot of versions of her. Okay. So she's gathering her versions through time, and they're all different. Yeah. And it's really, really hard to shoot when you've got, say, you're only shooting four pages one day, but say you're shooting opposite different versions of yourself, and you got to get yourself in these different mindsets. And then there might be another actor or two too. I mean, it is really, really complicated. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, is it if it's filming one of those things? I mean, I'm not I'm not an actor. I've never acted where. You do, you know, you prepare as best you can, you learn your lives, like you say, you become the character. But you mustn't really at times have a clue just what's going on, I suppose. You just do what you do without seeing the bigger picture. Um, can you watch yourself at the end of the day? Do you like to watch yourself? Or could you, do you just go, no, I can't stand to see myself? No, I watch myself. I can watch myself. I just, um, you know, two things. One is when a project is just finished, if something like kind of tore at my soul, like if it's an emotional scene, I can't watch, like I have to watch it 25 times before I can not cry. Because yeah, yeah. I remember everything I was feeling. Yeah, yeah. But as far as watching, yeah, it hurts, yeah. you know? But as far as watching it as a third party, that's what I do. Like when it's in the theater, I'm not watching me, I'm watching Sienna. I'm not watching me, I'm watching Dion. Uh -huh. You know, and so I can appreciate their strengths and their weaknesses, but I don't, I don't judge myself at that point. I can enjoy the role, but I watch it. When I talk about it, I'll actually say she. Yeah, you know it's really yeah. interesting. Yeah. Do, do you watch the so. uh, when you when you're doing like the screenings? Do you, do you spend time watching the audience though as well for their reaction? Because that must be that must be nerve wracking being there with people that you think might be judging you in the film and everything. Oh, everybody judges. <laughs> <laughs> to hell with you them. You can't do that too much. But what is really cool is that one of the um, 
you know, there was a whole bunch of press at our first opening yeah. and a couple of people driven a long way that I really respected their opinion and I'd known them for years. And so we kind of had a friend sit in the row so that he could tell us like <laughs> what they said, because we always sit back. And, and one of them like was crying during part of it. And it just made such a big difference to me that I could take somebody whose work I respect so much in journalism and move him emotionally. And yeah. he wrote beautiful things about it. I just don't want to call him out on crying. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, and just as much, we kind of absorb, you know, the emotional feeling of the people around you. You can tell yeah. if they're going on the journey. You can tell if they're how, you know, you, you get a, you get a good feel for how yeah. they feel, but you're not, you're not judging yourself while other people are watching you. Yeah. You know, you just enjoying the feeling of entertaining people. Cause that's what we do this for. Yeah. You know, is to move people. Oh, yeah. yeah, let them experience feelings. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, he says I've talked to her a few times now online and stuff. Um, um, did the email interview a little while ago. The thing you you told me about. I think we've got a very common early obsession because you had you had a very early obsession. Am I right in saying with David Cassidy? Yeah. Did you tell? Am I right in saying yeah? <laughs> no, <I>, my. <mine> was... <laughs> <laughs> now I wasn't obsessed with Cassidy, but I, I was obsessed with um, Susan Day, who was, I think, Laurie in the Partridge Family, for probably very different reasons. Yeah. Um, she was probably one of my very first crushes. Tell us about the David Cassidy stuff that you used to do as a kid. <laughs> it, it's not even an obsession in that way. It, it came, it came across was... as an obsession. <laughs> no, no, no. What was was that he to me in my mind as a remember I was a kid at yeah, this yeah, point yeah, it was okay. actually I um I wanted to be him so <laughs> what I would do is I would have, and it wasn't just David Cassidy it was like I did it with the Jetsons I did it with all these different groups I was I was less than eight years old and I would have these groups of my my neighborhood and I would cast them <laughs> and we would reenact like the Partridge family and this, but I always got to be the lead. So whether it was a male or a female, of I made course, myself the lead. Course, yeah. And I was just a little kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's just that I love performing. I also did um, roller skate parties that I tried to sell tickets to in the neighborhood when I was just a little tyke and then do these whole little shows, you know, I like performing, I like entertaining. What can I say? <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, each to, each to their own. I mean, who who were your 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 actual um, heroines or heroes when you were younger? Then? I mean, put aside Cassidy just for a moment. But in terms of film, sci-fi, who were your obsessions when you were, you were younger? Well, I don't I don't think it was as much particular actors as it was like my my longest memory of a sci-fi film logan's run probably had the biggest yeah. impact on me because i really started to think about all the concepts that they were talking about and you know what if you only had 30 years and oh my god i have so much to do and you know so I, <laughs> science fiction moves us to think outside the box yeah and even as a even as a kid i was like well, what if I only did live till 30? I got to get started now. I got to do this. I got to do that, you know? And, and, and so I think that it was more so, you know, the, the effect that these films had on me mm. and, uh, yeah. So I don't think it was an, an individual as much as it was the whole con concept of, of thinking outside the box and the what ifs. So that so, makes sense. You know, it makes perfect sense. So what was more important then? Was it, was it, you know, to, to be an actress or to, or to be famous or just to do something in that area? What was the, the driving kind of emotion when you, when you were sort of like getting into your teens and then onwards? You know, what was it? I don't think that anybody really strives to be famous because then you can't have fun on like Facebook and stuff like that. Like I finally <laughs> had to shut down my personal Facebook and I'm like, this took, just took a chunk of fun out of life. But people, because for as many, as many nice things as people say, you also get, you know, you also get the negativity. And yeah. so I, slowly yeah. you have to shut stuff down just because you can't let that crawl in. You can't let, you know, body shamers and haters. And because, you know, the sci-fi has a lot of geeks and they like to pick on people. Yeah. And yeah. so you have to slowly, yeah, you yeah. have to slowly shut down a lot of the things that you really enjoyed before. Like, you know, I'll ban people on Twitter and I finally had to take my whole personal Facebook off, which made me really <laughs> sad. And then my publicist manages my page. So it's like, um, yeah, it's just yeah. kind of, so I don't think anybody struggles mm -hmm. for that kind of attention, but I think that um, really just entertaining and performing and 
my one of my favorite things, whether it was when I was a kid dancing or singing or as I grew up performing, is I absolutely love entertaining. I love moving people and I love make believe. I love living the lives of other characters. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see that in every fiber of me back to when I was just a, a little tiny tot. Yeah. And um, and it's more so being it than it is the end result. The end result's really enjoyable to see that people really enjoyed watching that process. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, but it's, I think it's doing it. It's a shame that with the bad experiences because – you know, uh, you haven't banned me on Twitter yet, which is good. Thank you for, for not banning me just yet. That that may happen at some point. Um, but I mean, <laughs> I was talking to Neil last week, and he was kind of saying, uh, talk, when we're both agreeing about, you know, I, I, I'm a geek, I'm a nerd, you know, I, I love all this stuff. Uh, but sometimes I do get a wee bit, I don't know, embarrassed maybe at the some of the, the, the points of view out there and the obsessions that some people have, and they really do take it too far. I mean, we were talking last week about the reaction when the first female Doctor Who was announced, you know, a few months ago yeah. here in the UK. And some of the comments were just embarrassing from people. You know, I'm never going to watch that show again and all this stuff. Um, so, I mean, is, has it been mostly positive that you've had? Or, you know, I don't want you to talk about any negative specifically, but did that surprise you, the negativity, the, some of the stuff that you got, maybe? Well, I'd say the negative, the negativity, well, Neil kind of warned me. Yeah. He said, okay, you're, you're, you're going to get bashed. Yeah. You go into sci-fi, you're going to get bashed. You're going to get put on a pedestal, but then you're going to get bashed. And I'm like, I can handle this. I can handle this, right? But it hit so hard, and I'll tell you when it hit is when it went digital, and it hit the torrent sites. Right. And those people that watch a movie for free, they will just tear it to shreds, and tear tear me to shreds, and it's, and they'll 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 criticize my acting abilities. But you know, I have inside myself the knowledge of all the people I've studied with and the levels I've gotten to, yeah. so I don't take it to heart. Yeah. But it does hurt a little. So I got really proactive. I'm that person that's filing, you know, when I sit down for an hour, I'm filing a hundred DMCA notices. I'm shutting them down. I just, it's like, you can't, you can't, I, I can't just take it, you know, yeah. but I need to stop that. I need to just realize it's part of it. But I was really amazed how hard it hit. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you think it had anything to do with maybe the fact that you played such a, a strong, proactive woman rather than a, you know, the blonde screen queen type thing? Was it, would it have been easier, do you think, if you'd have been that kind of blonde screen queen instead of what you actually played, maybe? You know, I always made this pact to myself. I've done a couple of horror films, but I've refused since I was a teenager. I will never be the screen queen <laughs> because I'm not going to be in that box, you know, that box where you, they can't get back out of it. Right. You know, then they're constantly right. trying to prove that they can really act. Yeah. And, uh and, and so it was like, I've been in horror films, but it's been like as a reporter or as, you know, um, Donald the Crescent Moon, it was opposite Barry Corbin at a bar, you know, for the yeah, whole thing. Yeah. Kind of. And granted, those aren't as much fun. I mean, yeah, it'd be fun to scream and show a bunch of cleavage and yell and everything, but the, that's not really acting to me. You know, I mean, I realize there's a lot of actors that do a really nice job in their roles, Yeah. but I didn't, I didn't want to get in that box. So, um, but what would, what would, yeah, hap what would happen though if, you know, tomorrow you get a call from, I don't know, John Carpenter and says, I'll, I need you to be my, my lady screen queen. Come on, you, you'd, you'd, you'd go, You're John Carpenter, I'd have to do that. Forget the, you know, you would You know, you? every day <laughs> with new challenges and new decisions. And that's just kind of been my proclamation till now. Like I always said, I would never do any nudity. Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, yes, you see the back of me in Rogue Warrior and there's more to come in the time war. I mean, so it's like you always look at what I will do, but for me, it's not for the sake of being a screen queen or of, you know, I'm not into showing skin, but if the, but if the story calls for something, yeah. you know, then it's like, you have to stop and look at it and be like, you know, okay, I see where that's necessary or okay. I don't think that's necessary, mm -hmm. you know? So it's kind of, I think you have to look at each thing that you arrive at as you get that. Yeah. What about the, the experience of, of the you know the fans at the cons? Could you, have you done any, any of the cons, any of the Comic Cons or anything? As with Rogue Warrior, I what did. was that like? We did before it came out, right. but we've been so busy filming that we didn't sense it came out. So, I mean, the fans already before it came out, you know, in the press was amazing. 
But um, I think it's more important to keep making product. And then when you do hit a lull, then you then you go to a con or something. I've just been working straight for five years, so I don't know what having downtime feels like anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you should let him out make, let you have a holiday or something. You know, say, come on, Neil, I need a break here, man. Go on. <laughs> so, you what, know, it's go on. to find the wave when you're on it. You really do. If you, if you, you, Because I got off that wave once. I got really tired. Oh, gosh, 15 years ago? No, more than that. A long time ago. And I stopped for a little while. It's like, okay, I've been working since I was 15. I need a break. And years went by, and it was so hard for me to get my foot back in the door. Yeah. Like, people changed jobs, and agents weren't in the same places. And and so, uh, no, you, you never get off that wave, because that wave might land, and then you have to wait for the next one. <laughs> That's a nice way of looking at it, actually. I mean, I suppose, I mean, th things now, it just seems it's, looking from the outside, it just seems a real, like I say, a really busy, crazy time for you with, with you know, so many good things happening. Do you, do you have time then for any other projects besides the time or what else are you working on at the moment? What's going to be in the, in the horizons in terms of coming out for Tracy Bursal soon? Well, I know that the comedy Who's Jenna is supposed to be out the end of this year. I'm okay. still waiting to see that. Um, that's with Lionsgate. And then, um, then the, we plan on doing a limited television series after Rogue Warrior a little bit in the future from that. So that's the next thing on our list from there. But yeah. I can't even <laughs> next besides that because it's been almost every day. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you've got to learn the lines for today. Yeah, with that, with that novel that he's just given you today, you've got to learn all that first. So, you know. <laughs> Five pages sitting <laughs> So is that is that filming today that you gotta learn those for then? Is that today's yes. filming, yeah. Where will that be? Yeah. Is that in, in around LA or, or or where? Where will that be? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in LA, in yeah. Los Angeles. Yeah. yeah. Okay, listen. Yeah. Um I'll be ready. <laughs> um so what about the future you can't even think of the future then? Can't even think past learning those lines today then. You know, I'm doing what I love. I'm yeah. doing what makes me happy. I'm entertaining other people. We're getting distributed by major yeah. companies. Um, you know, it's just like you just kind of you just ride the wave of life. I mean, if I would have seen where I'm at now when I was younger, my child self would have been really excited. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I just hope that this child self feels that way yeah. in another 20 years. You know, it's like... It's fun to look back and to see what your geek side would have felt, you know. <laughs> if, so, if, 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 the, if the older you could, could could have gone back and said, "Look, forget the David Cassidy concerts. You're going to be a sci-fi queen. Forget all the." <laughs> <laughs> well, it actually, it wasn't the concert. It was um, the the TV show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was reenacting. Yes, uh, listen, I, I used to do really the same. Fun. I used to do the same thing. Uh, me and my friends, we used to reenact every episode of the Six Million Dollar Man. So and we do all the slow, oh, the slow motion running and all this stuff with the sounds. And that that was our every because it used to be on here in the UK. On, I think on a Thursday night. So the Friday at school, that was the reenacting the previous night's episode. So I used to do the same thing, you know. I you love know. it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I w I would like to genuinely say that. You know, loved Rogue Warrior. I can't wait for the Time War. I mean, it's probably going to be another few years till it comes out the way that Neil was talking last week. But, I, I, you know, you're ratcheting up this kind of like, you know, the wait for it now. It's like, you know, for me, it's just, i just got to see this damn film. Um, It'll be out next year. Next It'll year. It'll be out next year. <laughs> yeah. Is that it you will. saying that? Out, I would say six months. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, I would what, say six months. Because well, yeah. what happens is, is he wants to keep working on it, yeah. and then the sales guy's like, "Okay, I need it." <laughs> so, are you producing yeah. this one as well? Then, is it, are you producing Time War as well? Or so? Yeah. Yeah. So you have the power. You can say to him, "Look, stop." You know, surely as a producer, you can say, "Right, mm -hmm. that's it." You know, we've got enough. I I I could, but <laughs> my actor self wouldn't allow me to do that because. Every, every week, every month that we put into it, it gets better and better. Yeah. And sometimes the stuff he comes up with, I'll get a phone call at 6 o'clock in the morning. Oh, my God, I had an idea. And some of this stuff is really, it's out there. Yeah. You know, it's really good. It's worth stopping to do. Do, do, yeah. you, ever, do you ever say, the if he comes up with an idea, no, that's not going to work? Do you, ever, do you ever say, no? 
Well, yeah, sometimes, but more so it happens the other way around. Like yesterday, <laughs> I had to be on an angle of a shot. And I, I hesitate sometimes even making suggestions because it's usually no. <laughs> and yesterday, yesterday, I made a suggestion. He's like, that's a great idea. I like that. Let's do that. And I was like, yes, I got one. <laughs> So. Well, listen, Tracy, I've, I've got to thank you for your time. Um, you come across, and you know, I'm not just saying this to, to your face. You, in, in my dealings with you via Twitter or online, you come across as just genuinely nice and wanting to help people, wanting to communicate with people, and um, it's great to deal with somebody who is just, you know, so open and and you know, you treat people with the respect that you hope to get back. So I want to say thanks for all the help that you've given me over the last few weeks and months and you know all the little nods and you know the the awards and everything else the award that I got was great you know so I want to say thank you for everything that you've done for me it's been great and thank I want you to wish you, I want to wish you the very best of luck in everything that you do um, and certainly with the time war can't wait for that so um, thanks very much have a great day and I hope that you can learn thank the pages you. in time for when it comes to film the thing okay Okay, All so right, you take care. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Tracy. All Bye. the best. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.